Package from China, handheld battle. If it comes to portable gaming, there is a lot to talk about. And I got the question, what is the best portable device? The Retro Game 350 or the Game Kitty? I can totally understand if you are going to search for a device to play your old games, you are going to have this problem that you're finding yourself in this jungle of devices and you have no idea what to get. So in this video, we are going to do the side by side comparison of the Retro Game 350 over here and the Game Kitty. What are the differences? How is the build quality of both systems? And how are they running the games? So it's awesome that you're tuning in. Let's begin. All right, but first let's talk about the Retro Game 350 and what are more like the pros and cons of this device. So the first thing that I noticed with this is that it weighs quite heavy compared with the Game Kitty. Don't get me wrong, it's not very lightweighted, but it's a little bit heavier. So if you compare this with all the previous models I've reviewed, this is what we call the next generation of portable devices. There are some new features, for example, we're having two analog sticks, and as you can see, we don't have them on the Game Kitty. But this is something, I want to say, it's a very negative thing, because if you look at the analog sticks, they're very nice, they're a little bit wiggly, they're clickies, I like it, but at the end, where are you going to use them for? I can tell you already, there are not a lot of games and retro emulators that will use both joysticks, so basically a little bit pointless. I'm a D-pad guy, and if you look at the Game Kitty, we're having a very nice D-pad over here on the perfect position when holding it. So that is one big win for the Game Kitty in my case. But again, that is more like a personal thing. If you look at the shoulder buttons, a lot of people were requesting to have four shoulder buttons. So that is something that we have with the Game Kitty. A little bit of a problem because we're having two of them. Not a big deal if you want to play a retro arcade game because in total we're having six buttons. So this is more if you want to play the later generation like PlayStation 1 for example. So let's talk about the battery and what are we going to get because with the Retro Game 350 we're going to get a 2500 or 2500 battery. That with the Game Kitty is only a 1000. So you can remove it, it's not very easy because you need to open it up. Compared with the Game Kitty you can open the little hatch. And you can just pull it out and grab yourself another one. So that's not a big thing. If you can upgrade it in the future, you can maybe upgrade it. But as you can see, there is not a lot of space left. So that is something you need to figure out for yourself. So out of the box, this is what you're going to get. The cable is always in the way. We're putting it back. So if you look at the D-pad for example, the D-pad is a little bit more sturdy on the Game Kitty compared with the Retro Game. I really like the touch of both of them, so there's not, let's say, a winner in this case. is more like a draw in my opinion. But on the other hand, if you look at the analog stick, here's where we're going to get the difference. This is a very nice joystick as you can see over here, but again, this is more like personal taste. This is more like the joystick that you find on a PSP for example. I'm not a big fan of these little analog sticks, just give me this normal analog stick that you can find in PlayStation controllers or this idea behind it. Nevertheless, this is again a little bit of a um, personal taste, so that is something you need to decide for yourself. And the same goes of course with the position of the D-pad and the analog stick. Alright, so if we're going to talk about at the top side, there's a lot of difference here. For example, we can find two buttons what i mentioned two shoulder buttons on both sides and with the game kitty it's basically just two buttons and that's the only thing we're going to get but it's also very interesting if you look at the retro game we're having two clickish buttons here and two clickish button here more like a micro switch and if you look at the game kitty it's all the old school membrane but it's not going in all the way as you can see it works a little bit differently, just a part of the button goes in. So that is also again, what do you really like when playing it? I don't think it's very annoying, but still, I give my personal preference to the micro switch clicky button. Alright, so let's do a comparison with the top again, because I was loading off from the subject. Because there are quite some differences. For example, we're having here two Type-C ports, micro USB. One of these are for charging, and with a converter, so far I understand it is possible to add another controller. But that's something I need to do in a future video. 
We're having an on off switch over here, mic USB for charging. We're having AV out, same as here. But we're having here the CF slot. It's not a big of a deal because with the retro game, there are even more buttons at the bottom. For example, yeah, the analog switch, of course. We're having CF slot here at the bottom, a volume control and a reset button. Yeah, and here comes a little thing. There are no volume control buttons, only Game Kitty need you to use this with quick selection. For example, you need to press the star button and pressing up and down on the D-pad for adjusting volume or brightness. Not a big of a deal, to be honest, but it works a little bit faster. So I'm digging this, yeah. All right, so we already noticed that if you look at the speaker itself, we're having two little speakers over here. I really love audio, so having two speakers giving you stereo sound, I love it. So that is a very big positive thing of the retro game. But if you look at the game kitty, and here is a little bit of an annoying thing. There is only one little speaker. It's loud, don't get me wrong. But when you're accidentally touching it, you will block the sound. So the position itself, it's not the best position, to be honest. And I recommend the creator to make an update revision and put two little speakers over here, for example. We have stereo sound at the back. All right, so the first thing that I noticed when powering on the system that if you look at the way how they assembled, the display itself is totally different. Here we have this tempered glass and here at the top we can find it. You can see the display itself directly. So the tempered, the tempered glass will protect it, of course, but you can damage the screen itself or display itself. So that's a little bit of a positive thing about the retro game. So, but let's do a little bit side by side color if it comes to how good are the qualities of the color and everything. But if you look the displays side by side, you can already see that the Game Kitty is way more colorful than the Red Game 350. So if you look at the screen itself, I personally really love the Game Kitty. I really like how bright it is and how colorful. So that's something that is personal, very appealing to me. And that's something you need to decide for yourself, of course. But also, if it comes to the sound, so first of all, I have this idea that the sound is a little bit better if it comes to the mid and high range, for example, with the Retro Game 350. But the little speaker, oh my gee, this thing is loud as hell. And I didn't move the microphone itself, I just swap to console and just play a little bit to give you more like an idea. Same distance, same microphone, and you can hear that this thing is not bad at all. So to be honest, if you like quality, I can understand you like the Retro Game 350, but if it comes to the sound and how loud it can go, the Game Kitty is unbelievable for this tiny speaker. All right, so in the next test, we are going to do check the performance of both systems. We're going to run a little bit of PlayStation 1 and just see how it goes. All right. This game is running on 60 FPS. No dip so far. Reaching 84% of the CPU are has been used.
Wins like a charm. Going from a great start, and I'm not talking about the racing, 60 FPS. But surprisingly, the CPU is only peaking to 61%. So this means that this game, exactly the same settings, will consume less power of the CPU. So what we can conclude out of this side-by-side -side comparison with the Retro Game 350 over there and the Game Kitty on the left is that the Game Kitty is a little bit more powerful than the Retro Game 350. But if you look, for example, to the build quality, I really love the Retro Game for what it is. But here comes the other problem. I'm a D-pad guy and I love playing with the D-pad, so the Game Kitty is really appealing to me. The same goes to the display that is inside the Game Kitty. It's very brightful. And that is something that I really like about the Game Kitty. So again, this is something you need to decide for yourself, which of these two handhelds will fit your personal need. So that is something you need to decide for yourself. I want to thank you for watching. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the little bell because you're going to get notified by the Amadi YouTube when we're uploading a new video. Thanks for watching again. And I will see you in the next video.